everybody, welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast. A conversation to help Catholic influencers like you and me go deeper and further in influencing our world for Jesus. I'm your host, Father Rob Gallia. And I'm your co-host, Danny Sullivan. And we look forward to talking to you today about tattoos and the church. How has your week been? So, uh, I was going to say so good without even thinking. I think I've had a good week. Oh, no, I was sick. You were sick. And I never, like, I very rarely get sick. So when I do, I'm like, Mom, I'm dying. <laughs> but I think it was just a blocked nose. And you thought, it, you thought it was hay fever, but it was actually a cold. Yeah, I was And in- I could have got sick. <laughs> Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, I'm glad. Back to you. No, then. <laughs> so my, my how was your week? My week is good. Um, I've been working. Um, I don't even know what I did the last few days, but uh, over the weekend working in the parish. Interesting that I don't. I haven't travelled for a while, so it feels very strange. Weren't anyway, you in Sydney on Friday. Oh yeah, that was ages ago. Today is like Tuesday. Oh my god, <laughs> a full four days of no travel. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, but it's been good. It's been good. Oh, so today you have an interesting topic. Um, one that um, a lot of people ask me. Every week I get an email or a comment or someone asking me about my tattoos. Mm. And what, wh- why do Christians get tattoos? In fact, um, I remember just w- one time being in Indonesia and after a, a concert, this, this young woman came up to me and she was full of tattoos and she came up to me crying. She said, she says, Father Rob, um, I, I, I thought the Catholic Church had a problem with tattoos. In fact, she got tattoos and then was looked at really badly at, at the next time she went to Mass. And so she stopped going to Mass for a long, long time. But then she saw that, um, that I had tattoos, a priest and so she started to think wait hold on a minute maybe i'll go back to church is it true though that the catholic church has a problem because like hillsong they've got like these cool hipster musos they've got tattoos but like not that many catholic priests have tattoos from what i understand is it a like catholic thing well on an inside level i think there are a lot of tat- um, priests that do have tattoos <sighs> but they don't necessarily show them Scandal. um from uh, but you you see um, the, if you look at it what what does the church teach about tattoos well ultimately nothing nothing or at least not directly the the church doesn't have in fact a particular teacher teaching on every little thing and that's it we'll see you next week (laughs) no there's more to it than that though (laughs) but uh, the only time the church teaches us things particularly within the catechism and the teachings of the church and uh, is if there's something objectively immoral or some you do the right things for the wrong reasons where something that uh, we have immoral Moral motives to to talk about um, to to do something. Yeah, so like the church doesn't have a teaching on tattoos, mm. and even in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, like there's no in the index, there's nothing on tattoos. Like no. you look under T, and there's nothing. But there is in paragraph three six four. It's, it talks about like the temple, so the human body being a temple. And it says the human body shares in the dignity of the image of God. And then a little bit further down in the same paragraph, it goes on to say, for this reason, man or woman may not despise his bodily life. Rather, he is obliged to regard his body as good and to hold it in honor since God has created it and will raise it up on the last day. Mm. So the body is objectively good and we should honor the body in everything we do. In fact, that quote is in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, but it is quoted from Gaudium et Spes, um, a, a, a Vatican Council II document. So the question you see that we need to is, is we need to honor our bodies and regard our bodies as good. They are intrinsically good. Okay, so um, whether our bodies look good, look bad, feel good, feel bad, our bodies are still good because they are created by God and they're created good. So the question when doing things like tattoos or even piercings is not whether this is morally right or morally wrong, because we won't have an answer there. But the question we need to ask is, am I honoring my body as a God-given good if I get this tattoo or I, I get this piercing? So uh, we need to understand understand that we need to honor the body in everything we do, everything we eat, every piercing, every tattoo, all to honor the God-given body that we have. 
That's really reassuring to know that it's not like a teaching of the church that it's wrong to have piercings or tattoos because I've got both <laughs> and I would hate to have to leave the church. Or remove the <laughs> tattoos or the piercing, which the Jews, oh my goodness. Yeah. Is it sad that my first thought was, oh no, I guess I'll. <laughs> no. I would never. No, um, never do anything to dishonor the church, the, um, of course. But yeah, yeah at the end it okay. is a, a relief. Yeah, and that's really nice because I know that in Ezekiel there is, um, I'll read it out now. So it's Ezekiel chapter 6. 16 verse 11 um, and it's just talking about piercings here so I adorned you with ornaments I put bracelets on your arms a chain on your neck a ring on your nose earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown upon your head so even like in the bible here it's got earrings so how come I don't know I guess how come we know that earrings aren't bad but then tattoos yeah. When they're mentioned in the Bible, it's a little bit more iffy. Yeah, well, look, according to Ezekiel, this is something, obviously this was written in a cultural setting where piercings were done and often done. Um, and it, we know through scripture that there is nothing objectively um, immoral about piercings because this, as what you just read, it is the groom adorning the bride with piercings on their nose and on their ears. But just because it's objectively wrong, um, objectively okay, Okay, sorry, not wrong. Objectively, okay to to have these piercings it doesn't mean everyone has to get them, and it doesn't mean that we have to get our nose pierced and our ears pierced. But let's to talk about tattoos. Like, um, you see, this is different because Scripture doesn't have a really positive um, say about tattoos. But I think also uh, it's so important to look at uh, context. Let's let's read Leviticus nineteen twenty eight. So yeah, in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, it says, You should not make any gashes on your flesh for the dead or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So like, I feel like that says pretty like black and white in scripture there, like don't get tattoos. Mm. So that's it. It's forbidden. Yeah. So we really could wrap this up in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> so, well, look, I think we have to put it again in the context of Leviticus. Okay. Leviticus is a book written, which is a, a very much part of the Bible, an important part of the Bible. Um, but it is all about ritual, the things that we should do and shouldn't do in approaching God, but also moral purity. But it is, and this, I'm, I'm not saying this just because I, there's something I agree or don't agree with, but it is is no longer relevant to Christians. And how do I know that? Because it's written in the Acts of the Apostles. The council came together and actually said and actually said that these laws no longer hold us. In fact, let's just again in context, can you read the verse before verse 27? It says this. So verse 27 says you should not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. So what it's saying there, that same verse that says not to have tattoos is the same, the verse before is just saying don't trim your hair don't shave the sides of your head in fact, i went for a haircut yesterday so i disobeyed leviticus i'm gonna have to stop shaving my beard <laughs> <laughs> yes um well i don't know if you do have a beard please don't stop shaving your beard imagine if i come in on a monday and i just let my beard go for the weekend the bible told me not to shave my beard i was just trying to be a good christian father of <laughs> There you go. So uh, actually, yeah. So it's, uh, it also Leviticus um, in other verses forbids you to eat shellfish and to eat pork. Oh, so, like t- verse twenty nine here it says, "Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute." <laughs> like how? How is that? <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But how do we know? Like, so you're saying like tattoos don't have to count that one because in Acts it says no, some of them aren't real. How can we have to like? Oh, we can ignore number twenty seven and twenty eight, but also like it's pretty relevant even in the twenty first century do don't make your daughter a prostitute that yeah. still stands well some things in leviticus st- are still forbidden for christians and uh, for example the the um, verse you just read and also there's t- talk about murder and adultery but this is because um it is objectively immoral okay so there are certain things that are amoral that not necessarily immoral it's not immoral to cut the sides of your your hair it's not immoral to tr- trim your beard but it's uh, not immoral to eat pork but it is immoral to murder someone Okay, because you're taking away the life of someone else, which we don't have a right to do that. But which one does tattoos fall under? Does it fall under pork or does it fall under murder? There's a big gap there. Yes. And well, I think context again is so important. Okay, so um, uh, 
um, people would, uh, this was written in a time where Jews used to live among pagans, okay? And so the way you knew a Christian or um, a pagan, as someone who was involved in, in particular pagan ritual or practice, was if they were branded for the God they served. So there were hundreds, possibly thousands of gods, and each person was branded by the God they served, except for the Jews, the Jews weren't branded. They had a long beard, and that's how they were identified. They weren't they, allowed to shave it. Yes, that's right. While everyone else shaved their beard, so mm. that was the way you would identify. If they had their hair wouldn't be trimmed, because otherwise they, they, would, they would be identified with other pagan practices. So it's not about the permanence of the mark of the body. It's about being identified and claiming yourself for a particular god. Okay, and it, the thing is, Christians still should not participate in. Pagan Pagan ritual, whether they are involved tattoos or not. But the reality is, this is not why people get tattoos today. I didn't get a tattoo to label myself for a particular pagan, and m- most pa- pagan practice. And most, at least, I, I haven't, I've, actually, I have seen some people um, w- with horrendous tattoos and things that label them even satanic um, tattoos. And that's, in a sense, that's where it becomes iffy and wrong. But most of the people I know don't label themselves um, for a particular God. God when they get tattoos. So most opposition then, like these days amongst Christians, isn't scriptural. It's more like that cultural. So like not satanic, not pagan, nothing, I guess, that would mark your body permanently for something other than, you know, what you believe in or your faith or something that you would stand by. Yeah, so look, the, exactly. So the opposition is not a, a, a moral one, but it is a, a cultural one. Mm. And because tattoos very much are as, associated with, with certain beliefs and certain cultural standings. For example, I don't know, I remember when I was growing up, my dad, my dad had a furnishing company and he had um, factories. He had like these big, big factories that used to employ people, but he would never employ anyone who had a piercing or a tattoo. And he would come up to me and he'd say, Rob, I, I am, um, interviewed someone, but they had tattoos, so I didn't give them the job. There's something really similar in the town I grew up in. For anyone that's not Australian listening, I'll explain this word. It's this word bogan. <laughs> and redneck, it, redneck. Red, yeah, like a redneck. Like you just, it's not something you aspire to be. And a lot of bogans have an, like the Southern Cross tattooed somewhere, usually like on a calf or on their upper arm. And it's, it's kind of like, like branding yourself as a bogan. Like it's <laughs> just kind of, my brother is similar, I guess, to what your dad's saying there. Like, he'll meet someone and you'll be like, oh, yeah, nah, they were all right, but they had a Southern Cross tattoo. Yeah. And instantly you know you're like, oh, they're that, a bogan. Yeah, exactly. But that's the way you perceive them as bogan. Not yeah. necessarily. They wouldn't see themselves, oh, I'm bogan, I'm going to oh, get that. They're probably really proud of it. Yeah. That, <laughs> Sorry, <but> bogans. <laughs> But <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being a bogan, okay? But um, you see, I think this is a, a cultural as well, the way mm. we perceive things. Before it was prisoners, gangsters, and people who were maybe considered lower class or untrustworthy were the ones that, the, that would get tattoos. And that's why my dad wouldn't employ them, because in his mind, the minute he, someone had a tattoo, it means they spent time in prison. When that wasn't, that was a bias, you know? It was a cultural bias. And in fact, the biggest criticisms I get for my tattoos as a priest is not from Australia or from America or from Europe. But, funnily enough, it is from, from Mexico. And because it's there's still, for example, in Mexico, this strong idea that it is the criminals, the gangsters that, that have these tattoos. Yeah, and one thing that we learned, so we research for every podcast, and one thing that I learned with this one, which I found really interesting, is that Christians have actually been tattooing for a really long time. Mm. So there is in, like, a British museum, there's this mummified remains of a Sudanese woman that actually has a monogram of St. Michael on her inner thigh or even in medi- medieval Europe they would do religious pilgrimages to Jerusalem and while they were there they would get a tattoo to signify that they've completed that pilgrimage and there's actually a tattoo parlor in the Holy Lands that started tattooing in like 1300 AD mm. so it's been going for hundreds of years um, and then as well you know Coptic Christians have a cross on the, their wrist 
to signify that they are Christian. And that was because they needed that to be able to let, like, be let into churches. So this tradition of tattooing in Christianity isn't something where, I don't know, like I said earlier, Hillsong's just decided that it looks cool with their R.M. William boots and their skinny mm-hmm. jeans. That's an Australian <laughs> brand again. <laughs> yeah, it's a hipster thing. Um, but, you know, it's something that Christians have been doing for a really long time. And for the right reasons as well. Like yeah, the, the, like the pilgrimages. wrist pilgrimages and also the thing on the, the wrist is to identify themselves and also it was the place where Christ wounds where we often think of Christ's wounds on the in, the inside of the arms but that there's no way the cross the arm would have had the strength to to carry the weight of Jesus there so it was on actually on the wrist and so it was a, again a place of of um, Christ's wounds so it was done for the right reasons and it's as you said it's been done for hundreds of even if not thousands of years and it's not a recent phenomenon Phenomenon. Yeah. Can you say that word, phenomenon? <laughs> this is a fun fact. I can only say that word if I sing it like the Muppets. Okay, so sing it. So I can it. say, phenomenon. Okay, so you can <laughs> say But it. I can't say phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not a, a, a recent phenomenon. It is something that has been happening for ages, for ages, and for a reason. Now, having said this, we're going to conclude here because we're going to go to an interview very soon. And um, there's an interview with Phil. Phil is a pastor, a Protestant pastor, who has done a doctorate, can you believe it, on Christianity. Christians and tattoos. So um, he's quite a specialist in that. So we get to interview him and talk to him about this. But before we go on, I just still, w- one thing that we do need to do is, is, is to be prudent. There's nothing anti Christian about tattoos, but still, there are certain things, and I'm going to just say maybe five things that we need to be careful of when uh, doing a tattoo. First of all, safety. Look after your body. Don't take any needless risk to your body. Watch your health. Make sure that the standards of the tattoo parlor are up to standard and that you're going to be looked after and that there's no reused needles and so on and so forth. And um, get medical help if there's any infection or anything that comes out of that. The second thing is consider how others perceive this. If you're going to get um, piercings or uh, tattoos on your neck or the, uh, and you're going to work with elderly people in the hospital, just consider the reaction. Consider how it might affect people. Not that we need to be um, controlled by what others think of us, but let's be considerate. The third thing is art. It's a, it make sure it's good art. And I know art is um, subjective, what is good and what is not, but think of it as, as temple art versus defacing it with graffiti, okay? Um, and honor your body and don't vandalize it. De- decorate it, don't desecrate it. The fourth thing thing is think forever that this is going to last forever. Don't take something that's fashionable for a while, you know? Um, like the pineapples. My goodness, those were fashionable for, uh, for, a, for a while and everyone got pineapples. And uh, the, that, that happened for, for a while. Maybe it will remain fashionable, but just think twice. Think three times before that happens. They got pineapple tattoos or they just bought the fruit? No, they got pineapple tattoos. What? That's so... Why? Well, it was a very big a phase, a phase. But, oh. but maybe it's still fashionable. Maybe it still will be in 40 years' time. I don't know. A, a cool tattoo I have is what my keyboardist. Um, he, he got a, a pair of socks tattooed onto his onto his feet. That's a small <laughs> pair of socks. Does that, that mean that's he really have cool. To wear socks? <laughs> no, no, they're tiny on his <laughs> ankle. <laughs> but I thought it was cool anyway. Um, so I, if, when you think it is forever, just think. For example, if you, you print three or four T-shirts and wear that same T-shirt with the design of your tattoo, wear that same T-shirt for six months. See if you get sick of the design. Obviously, watch those T-shirts in between. Please. Because you will uh, you seriously get sick of those yeah. that design. And so uh, will society. And the rest of everyone. I hate your tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fifth thing is is your motives. Is your motive for vanity or um, because you don't feel good about a particular part of your body so you want to cover that or um, that you think that t- this tattoo is going to make you happy? Just watch your motives. Do it for the right reasons. So if you get a tattoo, get something that will inspire you and remind you of what is most important in your lives. And the greatest importance is that we honor God and we remember that God is the center of everything and this draws us closer to God. So now we're going to go into the interview that Father Rob has had with Pastor Phil Webb. It's really um, interesting. I listened to it already because I'm sneaky and I have that <laughs> private access. Um, but it was really like interesting and I couldn't stop listening. So we're going to go into that now about his research on the scriptural foundation to if Christians like are or are not allowed to get tattoos and what they should consider if they do. So 
um, we're here in Catholic Influencer Podcast. I'm here in the studio and Phil, Pastor Phil Webb, who is an ordained minister in the A. CC Church um, uh, and is the head pastor, senior pastor in a bilingual church in South Sydney. And um, it's just a, a privilege to be able to talk to him, to interview him today about Christians and tattoos. You see, because this is quite uh, sometimes seen as something taboo. Pastor Phil actually studied Pentecostalism, Pentecostals and tattoos. So it's such a privilege, Phil, to, to have you and, and to listen to your, your mind and your heart about the subject. Thanks, Rob. I'm really glad to be here and able to do this interview with you today. Yeah, so when I was doing my master's degree, Mm. uh, I decided to research why are Pentecostals choosing to get tattoos. Yeah, because there are Um, a lot of of Pentecostals, like you see Hillsong, you see um, these um, churches and with young people full of tattoos. Yes, there's many. And as a pastor who's been in the Assemblies of God ACC now for around 20 years, I've watched as this particularly strict holiness movement that traditionally wouldn't embrace tattoos, more and more people are getting them. But not just more and more people, but more and more pastors and leaders and the, the key influencers as well. Yeah, absolutely. And why, why do you think, well, what is their motivation, you think, um, to get these tattoos? Yeah, look. That was the driving force behind my research. I ended up interviewing 17 different pastors and leaders who've got tattoos and asking them their reasons. Mm -hmm. And every person had a unique answer. But as I started to compare their answers to each other, I found there was three key things that, that everyone was starting to say. And the first one was simply that, number one, they liked them. They view tattoos as an art form. And so, obviously, if they didn't like them, they wouldn't get them. Yes. Number two was a uh, really Christian focus, and that was that they see their tattoo as a form of worship. Yeah, which was I thought was interesting. And specifically, three different ways that the, the tattoo served in worship. Uh, the first one, they it was a real call for them to pray. Mm-hmm. Some of them were saying that they'd see their tattoo and it would remind them to, you know, to lift their hands to worship, to sing, to, yes. to, 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 to praise God. And often those tattoos had some imagery or some word that reminded them to pray specifically. Mm. I remember you, Phil, um, um, when we uh, we worked in, in Shepparton together, um, you worked as yeah. a youth pastor there. And I remember while, while you were researching this, you gave the example when you were talking about this, about uh, someone who had, um, had tattooed maybe the Holy Spirit, I think it was, at the bottom of their foot. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I, I just felt like uh, sometimes I like I ha- I have tattoos and um, but sometimes let's put it in this way. Let's say um, I, I I wear socks, different socks every week, and sometimes I have these religious socks, you know, like socks of of a saint or socks of the Holy Spirit, and people get so yeah. offended that I'm wearing something some sacred on my feet. So uh, why would someone do something like that? Put an image of the Holy Spirit on, on the bottom of their foot. So for this person, I, I remember the person you're talking about, and when I spoke to them, they said that uh, they got that tattoo at a time when they were learning about the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so for them, they put this tattoo of a dove as a symbol of the Holy Spirit on their foot, and it's a reminder to them that every day they should be walking with Jesus. Mm. And so it's not just the image that's important, but it, for them it was the location that yes. you know when they do put their socks and shoes on, they just think to themselves every morning, today, I want to walk with Jesus. That's right. And, and sort of couldn't they do this with a less permanent thing? For example, like wearing socks of the Holy Spirit. Why, why do you think people wanted something so, want something so permanent? Look, I think one, one thing I've found in talking to people about this is that they, they want to make something that is an identifier for who they are. Mm. So, you know, I said before, there's the artistic value for tattoos. There's the role tattoos play in worship. But the third reason, and this is true for Christians as well as people who are not Christian, is that tattoos today play a role in identity formation. And so a lot of people, both Christian and non-Christian, would say there's so many impermanent things in life and we really don't have a lot of control over things, but I do have control over myself and my body. And I think putting a, a mark on your body is a 
statement of this is who I am, this is what I believe, this is what I stand for. But for example, this is reminding me of like the criticism I often get. You know, I get someone quoting, yes. um, as you have, I know, what I've studied, Leviticus 19. Do not mark your bodies, do not tattoo yes. your bodies. How does that fit in? Yes. It's like this is exactly what the Bible seems to be telling us not to do. I've had lots of people quote this scripture to me as well. And some of the people that I've researched with, they said, they've had this come up. So the specific verse you're referencing is Leviticus 19.28. It says, do not make any marks on your flesh for the dead. And when, when God gave that law, he was specifically talking about when the Israelites come into the, the promised land of Canaan, don't go copying and mimicking the behaviors of the people living in the land. Where to be different from them? These people often like to pick which verse they want to look at for this, mm-hmm. because Leviticus nineteen twenty seven, mm-hmm. the verse immediately before that says, "Don't, cut, don't, cut don't your shave hair. the side of your head." Yeah, yeah. that's right. And so, while we're happy to cut our hair and, and, and dismiss one verse, we, we take another verse, the very next verse, and actually misapply it. And it's not even talking about contemporary tattooing. It's it's a completely different idea. Yeah. And but when it comes to contemporary tattooing, for example, another thing I've heard is like tattoo shops. You know, some of them, um, I've even heard people saying that these tattoo shops are demonic, you know, when, when choosing a tattoo, for mm. example. Uh, two, twofold question is what are the things um, a Christian needs to consider, should consider before getting a tattoo? And the second thing is should they go to a Christian tattoo artist? I think that's, they're good questions and they're personally questions I've wrestled with because when I did my research, I wasn't a tattooed person. Mm. And I actually went into my research a little bit unsure about what I would find. And as I did my research, I actually changed my position from being somewhat opposed to tattoos to actually thinking it is okay. Um, and to the point that I've actually gone and got one tattoo Mm -hmm. and I'm actually in the process of planning my second one. So, but the questions that I think need to be considered there is, you know, what makes Christian art? Is it is it that it was done by a Christian person or is it that it's received by someone who is a Christian person? I think if someone is actively involved in certain behaviours that I wouldn't agree with, I would probably steer clear of that person's business regardless of whether it was tattooing or anything else. I don't think the tattoo itself is an evil thing. It's more what does it represent that has the potential to convey a positive or a negative. And even I've heard of like, and I don't know how true this is, but this could possibly be that movements or um, Satanists or whatever that pray over the ink and things like that. And how how, how, do, how does one stay safe from things <laughs> yeah. like that? Yeah, I, I would probably take the Apostle Paul's approach to that one, mm-hmm. who applied it, you know, this thinking to food. Don't ask questions. I'm a Christian. And I've got the Holy Ghost living inside of me. He's more powerful than any demon. Yes. And so I don't need to be worried when I go to the marketplace, has this food been offered to an idol or not? Yes. I mean, if we did that, we probably wouldn't eat in most Chinese restaurants that have a little Buddha in the corner. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, so it's, so, uh, it's, it's about knowing who we are as well. I think w- one of the things that, um, um, the reasons I got a tattoo, I got my first tattoo which uh, on my right arm, which says forgiven. And it starts off with your first point, that it's always reminded me of God's mercy, of the maintenance mm. you know, of God. Every time I look at it and I'm feeling upset or, or whatever, I just remember it, it's a, a permanent reminder to me of God's mercy. And you know, there hasn't been one day, one moment that I've regretted that tattoo. Tattoo, nor the other tattoos I have, but um, pa- particularly this one because it just reminds me so much of, of God's mercy and it's permanently there. Like for me as well, I've got my, my first tattoo is a picture of a clock with the word Ephesians mm-hmm. and the, the hand pointing to 5 and 16, oh. which is Ephesians 5 16. Yeah. And for me, that uh, in the NIV version, I think it says, making the most of every opportunity. And so I see that as a every day, let's just be, rem- I'm reminded, make this day count. Use it, use it for God. Yes, and that's, uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that, always that, that permanent reminder. So I didn't see a, I didn't get my tattoo from a uh, Christian. Mm-hmm. I actually chose somebody in, in Shepparton where we were living at the time. And yes. I spent three hours with this guy as he patted this on my arm. <laughs> and I had wonderful conversation. I was able to, he was asking, what's the season? I thought, what a beautiful opportunity to sit with this guy. He's a captive audience for three hours, uh, and I get to share my faith with him, and he gets to do the work knowing that he's actually doing something that I 
to see those for God's glory. And so uh, even that process for me was a was a wonderful opportunity to share faith and inspire somebody else. Yes, and every opportunity to proclaim the gospel, that's right. So, yeah. Phil, um, yeah. I just as we finish off here, I just want to ask, what advice would you give to someone who has been thinking about getting a tattoo? So, number one, I do actually discourage younger people from getting tattoos. You want you get, this is a lifelong decision. It's yes. a permanent decision, and you want to go into this really making sure this is something I want to keep forever. Um, I would also encourage people to think about what am I putting on my body? What am I showing to the world? What are people going to see and and think about that? I don't think the tattoo itself is a bad thing. Culturally, everybody in Australia is okay with tattoos today. Not not everybody, but it's very broadly accepted. What is that image going to be? How is it going to be perceived? How is it going to be understood in the future from people? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, these are so, so important to consider. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to conclude with, something you'd like to leave us with uh, when it comes to y- your research and uh, and what you found out. In yeah, it. yeah. Look, I think um, one pastor I spoke to, the word that he said came to mind just then, and someone had criticized him. He's got many tattoos on many parts of his body, and he said that people would say to him, how could you defile the temple of the Holy Spirit like this? Mm. And his response to them was, actually, if my body is really the temple of God, I want to make it look as beautiful for him as I can. Mm. And, and you know, his, his pictures are all beautiful themes of salvation and the cross and, and Christ and the Holy Spirit, things that are really core and central to, to who he is as a Christian. And, well, I had another pastor that I spoke to. He actually got his first tattoo before he was saved. And he came from a bit of a rough background, and he actually had some... Uh, inappropriate language written onto his body. And once he became a Christian, he actually tattooed over that with a cross. And so for him, yes, he regrets that first tattoo that he got, but he looks at that cross and it's a reminder to him that the blood of Jesus Christ, the cross of Christ, covers all of his past sins. Mm. That is such a powerful statement. And that's beautiful. And at the end of the day, it's our soul we need to be fighting for. Our bodies are important, and I'm a big advocate for looking after our bodies with my training and with clean yeah. eating and all of that. But at the end of the day, it should never come. Um, we should use every part of our body to help us to help our souls um, reach to Jesus, reach to to the cross. So, Phil, um, I really thank you so much for your your time. I thank you so much for taking this interview. And I found this really interesting. Um, There's a lot I'm going to go and and take take home with me. Um, So, once again, thank you so much for for your time. Thank you for your research. Thank you. And we're going to be praying for you as well. Now you're actually studying and you're going to do a doctorate on on Pentecostals and sacramentalism um, and the Eucharist and things like that. So uh, us as Catholics also will be praying for you that you will, um, yeah, this will be a beautiful insight for you and for your congregation too. Thank you, Rob. I really appreciate the opportunity. I've, uh, I've personally found this research fascinating and really insightful. You know, in my research, I did look at a lot of literature from Catholic sources and Eastern Orthodox sources. To me, tattoos was turned into a beautiful place of overlap between different expressions of Christian faith. And so I really appreciate this chance to to share my research with you today. Once again, thank you. And please know that we'll be praying for you. Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. God bless. God bless. Thank you so much for listening to the Catholic Influencers Podcast today. It's been a joy to have you with us. Remember to get in touch at FIGministry.com forward slash podcast or any of our social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram with FIG Ministry. See you next week. Bye.